In this lesson, we're going to create a custom tab bar for our app. And it's not as hard as you might think. Here's what it's going to look like when it's done. All right, let's dive in and see how it's done. All right, so let's take a look at the design here. And we have this tab bar that we're going to try and build. Now, one thing is I am not going to use these icons here. Um, I've talked to JC about this. I'm actually going to use the SF symbols. And if you're working on a team, let's say, you know, at a company, you, you probably can, you can suggest it to the designer, but being a developer on a team, you have sort of limited say as to um, what to do. If that really is the designer's vision to use, you know, custom icons and uh, custom designed uh, icons for the tab bar, then that's what you go with. But uh, for me being uh, sort of the owner of this app, uh, I am going to decide that I want to use SF icons. And there are some pretty close ones, as you'll see, um, to these. All right, so let's jump into Xcode here. And let's start implementing this tab bar. Now, this content view, we renamed it to root view, we actually renamed everything to root view, except for the actual file name. So let me go ahead and do that as well. And finally, we're actually going to put the tab bar in a separate view, and then just include it in this root view. So I'm going to go ahead and start creating some different folders in here for our different uh, views. So I'm just going to call this uh, our custom tab bar that up there and inside this folder we're going to create a new swift ui view and i'm just going to call it custom tab bar and in terms of the root view how we're going to include it is we're going to use a v stack and we're going to put the tab bar down here in order to push the tab bar all the way to the bottom I'm going to put a spacer here and I'm going to create an instance of our custom tab bar. And after we design how this tab bar looks like after we make it look like what it's supposed to, then I'll talk to you about how we can uh, track which tab is tapped on and things like that. If you went through the Swift UI design course, that's part of this uh, CWC plus program. You'll also, um, you'll know how to build these custom tab bars already. Okay. So inside, our custom tab bar view. Let's start with an H stack. And we're going to put the three buttons in here, right? Because there are these three buttons. And also this tab bar is a specific height. It's 82. And it's always going to be 82. So I am going to code that height right here. Frame height 82. And inside here, we're going to put the buttons. Now, we are going to want to make these button this button reusable so um, we are going to end up putting this into its own reusable view probably called custom tab bar button or something like that and then just have three instances of that however in this like for now I am going to hard code the three buttons here just so we can design it and make sure that we get it to the point where uh, it is functioning and it is looking like what we want and then I'll refactor that code into its own reusable tab bar button. All right, so we're going to start with just a plain old button. Uh, so here, switch to. And for the label, if you take a look at this, it, it looks like a V stack to me, right? So there's an image, there is a piece of text, and there's also like an accent here, which we will do probably do that last. Let's do the icon and the text first. Also notice that it's all centered and by default, this V stack is uh, centered anyways. So we're going to have an image system name, and this is where we are going to bring up this and uh, I think it's called bubble. Yeah, bubble. So I'm going to use bubble left. Okay. I lied. It's not exactly the same as what we have here, but that's what we're going to use. Uh, if you did want to use these images, right? What you would do is you would export these images exactly like how we exported all of the other design assets in lesson two and then you would include those design assets in your asset library 
right in here you probably like have another one called tab bar icon images or something and then in instead of putting the sf symbol name you would just you would just put whatever name you you put in your asset library here because that's how you specify an image from your asset library but since we're using sf images this is what we're going to do um okay so vstack we also have text and for that this is going to be just chats now this text is using you know you see we have all the fonts right uh, if we go into the inspect panel it is using lex and deca regular size 12 and we have specified that here tab bar as a font all right so now i can very easily just go font font dot tab bar and let us turn on this preview and see what that looks like okay so we have chats there now let's double check the spacing between the text and the icon we've got four we've got four this one looks a little oh it's still four okay so we have four uh, so i am going to specify you know rather than specifying i could do padding top is four uh, but I think I'm going to specify it here. So alignment is center, center, and spacing is four. So that's going to put four right there. Also, I'm going to constrain this image, this SF symbol, to whatever size it's supposed to be. So this is 18 and 18. This one's a little bigger, 32 by 32. And this person. select the whole person here is wait I'm not selecting the right thing okay this this person this context icon is 24 by 24 this is actually smaller this icon oh wait nope I selected the wrong thing before 24 by 24 okay so these two icon images are 24 by 24 this one is 32 by 32 so I'm going to restrict this I don't want it to uh, warp, so I'm going to set it to resizable, uh, scale, scale to fit, and also frame with 24, height 20, 24. All right, perfect. And also the uh, the color for the tab is going to be we have a color for this uh, let's see icons hmm, what color is this let's see here um, did we include that here I think it's this one uh, icons secondary go back to the UI design yeah all right icons secondary so what we can do is for this button we can say that the tint color is icons secondary and right, so that's our gray right there and we are just going to copy and paste this for the second button and the second button is going to be uh, let's work on contacts and the sf symbol is going to be person uh person 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 so profile maybe all right so we are going to copy that let's put that right there okay and then now let's work on this middle button uh, this one's going to be a little different, so that's why I'm going to code this one out. Now, this is a V stack again, but this icon, actually, we do have an SF symbol for this. This is slightly bigger, though. So I guess I can take that, paste that there. And this SF symbol is going to be add. Is it plus? Oh, yes. Here we go. 
plus circle fill. That's what we're going to want. And remember, this is 32 by 32. This is mean chat and um, the tint color, the tint color for this is going to be color icons primary, if I remember correctly. Okay, so now we have this. Notice how it doesn't seem very aligned, right? You see chats and contacts are aligned on the same uh, y-axis, but new chat is slightly below. If you take a look at this, it's sort of the same thing, although it's less obvious. Or you can see these two lines, you can see these two red lines connect chats and contacts, but new chat is sitting below that. Um, here, it's it seems like it's a little bit too much. So we can change the alignment for the H stack to center. Um, I think that was actually by default, I think. Maybe it's just, it looks so off because they're so close together. And then when we finally space them out, it might, uh, it might look more like this. So that, that's the next thing we need to do is to spread these guys out. And uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to put the button inside a geometry reader and then have the button take up the entire space of the geometry reader. And you'll see why in a second, because it's going to help us actually uh, put that blue rectangle over the tab. Um, the problem with putting the blue rectangle, let's say I just create a, a rectangle right here. I'll show you why first so you can understand how we're going about this. Um, um, let's just put in some arbitrary numbers. Okay, so let's say I have a blue line here marking that this is the current tab. It's really hard to tell right here, but because this is a V stack, this tab having that blue line is going to be like it's going to shift this icon and shift this text slightly below this tab, right? See, this tab doesn't have that blue line. Now you could say I can put maybe an invisible rectangle there and then just turn that like white and turn that blue so that they maintain sort of the same height, whether they have a blue marker or not. However, if we use a geometry reader or we use a Z stack, this blue line doesn't, um, it doesn't push everything down because with geometry readers and Z stacks, it put thing it it layers them on top. Whereas V stack, it distributes it one below the other. So here, let me demonstrate what I'm trying to say here. And it's more obvious if I let's say do that, right? If I do that now, you can see like this icon is is really out of place vertically as opposed to this icon here. And so we're gonna let's say take take that and then we're going to create a geometry reader. We're gonna wrap this V stack inside this geometry reader. All right, and then now inside this V stack, you can um, do frame width is geo dot size dot width. And height is geo dot size dot height. And let's zoom out a little bit. You can see the geometry reader tries to take up as much space as possible. So that's another reason why I'm using this instead of the, um, the Z stack. And now if you see, if I put, um, I put this rectangle in here, you'll see that it doesn't take up, even if I make it a five, or like a 10, you'll see that this icon is still in line. It's going to be in line with that one. Let's put the geometry reader on the contacts one as well. And then for this V stack, I can do frame width geo.size.width and the height geo.size.height. And let's just uh, command A and then control I to just re-indent everything. 
Now you can see that even at, I have this thick blue accent here, the chats and the content contacts icons are still in line with each other. So now the, the other question is, you know, we, we're going to have to position that actually over the, um, the icon. Okay, so let's go back into the uh, Figma file and, and double check. Notice that this isn't a perfect rectangle. The bottom left and bottom right corners are rounded, and we will address that um, later on. But for now, we're just going to use a straight rectangle because this is going to require some special treatment. Uh, with the default Swift UI corner radius modifier, you're not able to specify specific corners you want to round. So we're going to have to address that later on. But for now, let's take a look at um, the height and the width, 64 by 4. So we can um, I'm going to change the height to 4. For the width, rather than I think rather than hard coding it as 64, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it relative to the geometry reader width. The reason for that is because this geometry reader width gives us the width of the entire button, right? So I'm going to make this blue rectangle um, half the width of it, and then I'm going to add left padding equal to a quarter of this width, and that's going to position that directly in the middle. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So the frame, instead of 64, it's going to be geo.size.width divided by 2. Right? So it's going to be half. That, that looks like quite a bit. But let's finish this off and see what it looks like. So padding dot leading. So that's padding from the left uh, to the to the size of to the amount I mean of divided by four. And that's going to put that right in the middle. Okay. Um, let's stick with that. Okay. So we've got our. So we're going to have to put, actually put the same thing on the contacts as well right here so you'll see it both like that now this new chat button is not actually a tab it's a button and that's why it looks a little different when you tap on this new chat we're not going to put a blue accent over it because it's literally going to pop up a new screen an uh, overlay pop-up that looks like this this new chat where you're going to be able to specify, you know, add some recipients and start a new chat. Whereas the other two tabs, this chat tab has a blue indicator because this is the chats tab. And then the contacts button brings you to the contact contacts tab. <laughs> so that's a separate screen as well. And that's why those two have blue markers. Now we have to make all of this functional, right? Because this is not actually functional just yet. Um, and we also have to turn at least this button, the chats button and the contacts button into a reusable component because there's no point in having mostly the same code in two different places. But first of all, let's make this tab bar work because for now, these are just, um, these are just buttons. So we need to keep some state as to what tab it's currently on. Now, um, Typically, if there are a static number of states, like a, a known number of states, you can create an enum type. So I'll call this uh, tab, or uh, let's call let's do tabs actually. And we'll, this is going to be an int, and there's going to be a, a couple of different cases. So it can either be you know chats, and we'll call this uh, zero. We're, there's going to be uh, contacts. Wait, case. And then this will be one. And because new chat is a button and not a state, uh, I don't know if I'm going to put this case here. Let's leave it out for now. But the next thing we have to do is decide where are we going to keep track of the current uh, tab, you know, the currently selected tab. Should we do it in this tab bar or should we do it higher up in the view hierarchy? And I would say that we should do it higher up in the view hierarchy. The reason is because if you take a look at this preview here, we need to know, like the root view needs to know what is the currently selected tab 
so that it can change what's here in in this top section right so therefore I would say that we need a state property here and call this the selected tab and this is a type of tabs and we are going to default this to contacts because I think that that is after the onboarding screen um, we are going to throw the user into the contacts tab so I'm going to set that as the initial one uh, and then the tab bar however you know when the user taps on these buttons we need to somehow communicate back up to here for the root view to change the state to to whatever tab the user selects right so inside the custom tab bar here there should be a binding right bound to this property here so here you know if you're unfamiliar with state properties and bindings i would say review the uh, foundations course in uh, the cwc plus screencasts course there's also a lesson on uh, swift ui data flow so i'll link to that in the description as well so you can that talks all about state properties bindings and, and that sort of stuff okay so selected tab is going to be tabs so now we have access to this selected tab now we also have to now pass this through as a binding uh, selected tab and so this property gets passed through when we create the custom tab bar it's going to be bound to this property right here and then now when the user taps on this one switch the chats we are going to be able to say selected tab equals chats okay, and then down here this is switched to contacts we're going to be able to say selected tab equal equals contacts um, the next thing is that we only want to show this blue mark if it is currently you know contacts so we can definitely add an if statement here so if selected tab is equal to contacts then we are going to show this blue mark and then same thing for up here if selected tab is chats then we are going to show this blue mark Oops. here like that let's re-indent everything and our preview is broken but however we can do dot constant and we can just pass in contacts for our preview okay so now let's try to run this and see what happens all right so contacts is the first tab so that works and this is just the button all right so our tab bar is working the next thing to do is to refactor this button out of this tab bar and make it a reusable view so let's add a new file swift ui view and call it custom tab bar button uh, let's just call it tab bar button oh that actually might be a reserved maybe not okay so we are going to basically grab now I want to keep the buttons here because I don't want to introduce another layer like I don't want to have to pass the selected tab down to the tab bar button itself so I'm actually just going to make this part reusable you know the visual which is the majority of the duplicated code anyways so taking a look at this highlighted code the things that are dynamic is the text the SF icon name and also whether it is active or not whether or not we should show this blue rectangle so I am going to create three properties here var image name and also a boolean for whether or not we should display that blue rectangle okay so I'm going to go here I'm going to copy this I'm going to actually I'm going to cut it no I'm going to copy it okay copy <laughs> go here replace this text label with our uh, visuals and then for the button text I'm just going to replace it with our property button text for this I'm going to replace it with image name and then for this I'm going to say if is active right if this boolean is true then display this and I think we're good okay missing arguments for the preview 
um, say chat um, bubble dot left true let's see if we can get a preview all right it looks off because it's not in the context of this h stack okay so here we are essentially going to get rid of all of this I'm sorry comment it um, but I can replace this with tab bar button and I can put chats bubble dot left and is active is basically selected tab is equal to chats and space it out so it looks better easier to read all right so now let's do the same thing here and uh, for this for this contacts one all right so instead this is going to be contacts this is going to be contacts and this is just going to be person and i can get rid of all of these all of this duplicated code all right now let's run it again just to make sure that everything still looks okay and we're going to be done with our custom tab bar. Well, it looks pretty good. 